Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at how to light a night scene uh, cinematically using just one light. Now, uh, first of all, I'm testing out this new lighting setup. Let me know what you guys think about it. I think it might change it up, I don't know. But anyways, back to today's video. Uh, this one in particular is from a music video that I was on shooting lately. And I lit it up using just one light, though it might have needed multiple lights, but there's a few key points you can learn here. Uh, ideally, or uh, you would probably might have needed two or three lights, but using a few tips and tricks that I'm gonna mention here, I minimize it to only one light. There's no need to make a whole, uh, you know, big setup just for nothing when you can minimize it and just use one light, get the same result. That's what we're gonna talk about today. First off, pre-planning, very, very important, sometimes overlooked, but it, it's about 50 to even 70% of the process. You pre-plan correctly, you're gonna save yourself a lot on set and even more in post. So always pre-plan. I went ahead and knew exactly the kind of theme that I was going for. I looked up some images uh, just to get some inspiration and I found one in particular that struck my interest. Uh, I knew a few key points before I got there. I was looking for a kind of night scene, first of all, romantic. Uh, you got kind of like a candlelight in the middle. One thing in particular I was looking for was kind of a, a, a reddish theme or half, half kind of red lit and the other was white just to create some color contrast. And since the skin tones are in the red, red area or red spectrum of the color wheel, I wanted the background to have these kind of bouquet with uh, a bluish hue. So that was uh, the main theme I was going for. By going on set, the first thing I did before jumping into anything, I scouted the location and lo and behold, there was a big sign, red sign, lighting directly onto a table. So I immediately knew that that was the table that I wanted to use for the scene. And now I've got a uh, light coming out from the signboard that was all red. That was lighting half my scene. And then in the background, there were lights from other buildings which were lighting the background, which is exactly what I needed. So just by picking the right location, right spot and scouting ahead of time, you can really save yourself a lot of time uh, instead of setting up multiple lights. So obviously that wouldn't be the case, but I'm gonna guide you on how you could have done it if you didn't have these lights. So now we have our uh, red light, as you can see, coming from the one side of the subject. And then we have our background, which is lit through, I don't know, building lights in the background. They're white. We can kind of play up with a use a little bit in post, make them a little blue. Now, the second thing I wanted, the other side of their, their face was not very lit. So that's where I brought one light in. So that was serving two purposes. This was a motivated light, mimicking the light coming from the background buildings, pretending like that light shining to their faces was from there. So that served that first purpose. And the second purpose is to create some color contrast on their face, have it half lit in red and half lit in white. By having red on their face, my main intention was red is known to have that romantic feel to it. It's uh, Valentine's, hearts, flowers, roses. Red is a symbol for romance, so that's why I wanted to have half of it red to symbolize the romantic, emphasize it, and having the other light coming in at blue, it would create some nice color contrast on their face, and I really loved how it turned out. Now, let's say you didn't have these, uh, all this privilege of having the, you know, the signboard, uh, or even the background lights, what would you do in that case? Well, in terms of the signboard, you can simply have another light coming in front of your subject, or sorry, to the side of it, uh, with a red gel. A red gel, something like this, would be ideal. You simply put it on in front of your light, or uh, you could get these for cheap. Uh, I think Roscoe sells them for about $30 for a whole set. So just having a second light on this other side of your subject with a red gel, you can mimic that aspect. And now you have two lights on set. How would you get the backlight? Ideally, you would wanna have some lights in the background. I don't think in any restaurant possibly you would have at least some sort of lights. So you can play around with the movements and position to at least have your background light uh, coming naturally from buildings, I don't know, from the restaurant itself, whatever it may be. You can use some light balls, similar to the ones you would use on a Christmas tree, uh, decoration lights, whatever kind of lights you can put in the background to give you some uh, background blur and bokeh. Then you would have your second light coming in from that same direction to give the illusion that that light is coming from the, the spoke balls or anything in the background. So I think that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. We also had one uh, middle kind of lamp or lantern in the middle. It's a very cliche romantic scene, but that was these small touches just really add to the scene and make it 
you know, emphasize that romantic night dinner scene. So that's pretty much it. That's how to light a romantic scene using just one light. But like I said, you don't always have these privileges of a signboard and background lights like uh, we did in this situation. But with proper pre-planning, you can really minimize the amount of lights you use just by pre-planning and uh, moving around, selecting the right angles and minimizing it to just one light rather than having multiple lights on set. Not only are you gonna limit the angles you can take shots from, but it's just gonna be a burden to uh, you know walk around the set and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something. And if you did like this video, let me know in the comment section below. I will do more breakdowns of similar stuff in the future. So if you're new, subscribe down below. That's it for this one. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, also one more thing before I go. If you guys have any video suggestions, do let me know in the comment section below. Oh, what is this? Oops. Anyways, so yeah, let me know in the comment section below. There's another one. Let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to do my best and I'll, I'll do my best to bring it to you. I'm trying to create more videos where uh, there's more practical element to it on set, what you would use in the real world. So let me know any suggestions you want down below and I'll do my best to do it. So yeah, that's pretty much it and I'll see you guys next time.